just gonna start recording now. Recording's a little late for game one, but that's okay. We'll d worry about that later. Okay, a tiny bit louder and we're perfect. Let's do it. I think that should hopefully be good enough. If not, okay. all right. First stock taken, seven, with the uh, IVF smash. Ooh, it gets a nice combo at the start. Three up airs, very brutal. Lots of damage coming out here. Alright. Austin able to recover with the Wonder Wing. 07 for 7 or 7. Big salutes. Charizard switch. I really like this trainer skin because it's all it's all three of the shiny uh, Pokemon variants, which is really cool. Um, anyways, uh, seven kind of getting taking a dominant lead right here, up two stocks, um, getting some pressure on the banjo. Of course, this is an early set of the game, so. Gotta get our warm ups in, you know? <laughs> Ooh, that charge down smash barely not connecting. See a back throw, will it kill? It will not kill. Very good DI from 7. Ooh, very nice grenade in the up smash confirm coming from. Uh, on the banjo. I'm gonna try to take uh, some momentum here com coming into um, seven second stock. Hopefully banjo can keep out the squirtle for long enough uh, to deal some good damage. Ooh, very charged F smash just about. Uh, gets the IV, but Ivy was able to dodge it, get on the platform. I like the recovery from 7, just opting to take center stage instead of interact first, and then come in afterwards. Ooh, almost the stomp up air, uh, being able to kill there, but uh, up air is kind of weak, so it's not really much of a kill move, but it does rack up a lot of damage. Forward tilt, the tipper, able to... Uh, Kill Banjo there. Banjo on last stock, whereas Trainer's on uh, second or the third stock of the game. See how it pans out here. Alright, the Ivy back throw is going to be able to take it. Game one, going to seven. Four bands. Clap. There's 14 stages. That's great. Right, game two is going to be on green greens. Uh, both uh, players decide to stay the same characters. Let's run it.
Zach and Clay had not started their bracket set, so now they have. Got them in the shade. We're good. Alright, and so far, it looks like Seven's taken um, stock. Um, both players about around even percent. Fortunate SD coming out from Aurox. It do be like that. This game is very tough. Um, but, yeah, very fun. Ooh! You love to hear that sound. Just in anything. Doesn't even matter. Signifies, oh, you're dead. But, Aurox was not dead. It's all good. That is a super accurate side B that never misses, by the way. Um, and it does indeed continue the trend of never missing. Uh, as seven takes um, Austin's third stock. A lot of charged smash attacks coming out from Orox here. Um, trying to predict a, a, a roll or something, but seven just not giving in. Ooh! The armor on the up B is able to save its bizarre there from sudden spikage. Oh! Not that one though, unfortunately. And seven is now on to its third stock. However, Aurox at very high percent here. Yep, and is able to get smash attacked out. Game two, going to seven or seven. Ooh, and the Congo falls for counterpick. The stage is goaded. Especially with Gangplank Galleon Gang on it. <laughs> Ooh, and the Mac counterpick. I like it. Mac a really solid character in this game, unlike Ultimate. He actually has aerials and a solid recovery, so. Especially with a stage with walls. Huh. We got a DK wrap. That's that's a close second to the Gangplank Galleon game. I really love how uh, the trainer is just kind of floating there in the background. She's just sitting, enjoying life, you know. Oh, the DK crew. Huh. recovery situation right here. This might determine a lot about this third game. Ooh! Could have been a very slick uh, KO punch, but opted not to go for it as it would have been a little risky, especially if uh, missing it would put you off stage against an Ivysaur. It's really tough. Trading two for two. Both players are on their third stop.
We'll keep the base camo on it. It kind, of, it kind of does block the view of some of the game. We'll move it uh, to the set, I believe. All right. Aurox on tournament stock. Uh, seven on game stock. Going in here. One one. Good string from Orox, getting a solid 62% in there. Able to punish the switch for tilt. Super accurate side B does hit, but it hits a shield. And that charge up smash, able to uh, get the sweet spot and kill off the Zard. Game 3, going to Orox. We love to see close sets. So... We, we love to see not 3-0s is what I mean. <laughs> That should be better over there. Alright, Yggdrasil's altar as the uh, the counter pick, or as we like to say, CC's altar, because CC the goat. Three for three stocks here. I think this uh, this map pick is helping out Warox a lot. Uh, able to take the you know third game with it, so this is really really good. Um, a lot of SDs as well because Mac like tends to stay on the ground more compared to Banjo, who can kind of go around the air with his air speed. You know, leads to a lot more SDs overall. So I do like this Mac pick. Really interesting thing I've seen HDR Max do recently is um, it's jumping and then neutral bay for armor and then being able to shield cancel it. Very cool like option. It's like shielding in the air. Alright. KO punch uh, off the game for the second stop. I mean, unless uh, a really late KO punch can come in on this stock, but it is Mac, and as I call it, there it, there it goes. Uh, two stocks to two. This stage is so cool. I love how the platforms move. Cause you get like miniature versions of Smashville when they like move like that, you know? Very cool. from there coming from uh, the map very good oh, nice seems like seven can get uh, Orox off stage a lot but just um, the Mac just has like good burst options to just get back like, straight back on the stage you know just deny that that edge guard potential completely Tech might have been able to just straight up combo into KO punch. Um, oh, 
Sporter does it instead. All right, game four going into uh, Orox. All right. Here we go, game five situation. We'll see how this pans out. The Piranha Plant counterpick coming out for game five. You love to see it. The seven plant is a staple in uh, in SoCan HDR. So this is gonna be a fun. This is gonna be a fun game five, especially for Orox. Because uh, judging as Orox doesn't like this stage or this character. <laughs> no, I don't know. I actually don't know what your opinion on Plant is, but just thought it would be funny to say that. <laughs> Does this count towards PR Sandvale? Of course it does. Very much so. <laughs> this is a very serious, ultra serious tournament of round robin best of fives caliber. I actually do have all the tournaments that could count towards PR. All saved in the uh, tournament postings channel. So, I mean, if we actually want to do an HDR PR, that'd be fun. Um, ooh, the fully charged punch gets slightly punished, but not for too much percent. And then uh, KO punch is now down and out for this one, but the up B is able to confirm the kill for Piranha Plant. Three stocks apiece. KO punch unfortunately B reverses, but might have been able to connect. I don't know actually because I believe uh, Seven might have shielded it, but if that were to happen, but obviously just hypotheticals. Ooh, the get up counter would have been really good, but it does not get hit unfortunately. Three stock to one, fifty percent. Um, ooh, barely lives that. Very good. Um, Di coming out from seven. Ooh, up air, up air. Oh, can't confirm anything off of that real quick. But Mac with the stage positioning is able to get the second stock for for Piranha Plant. Um, this is gonna be a hefty mountain to climb for the little Mac, but. Um, could be very possible to come back from. Oh, up smash. The first hit come connect, but does not connect in the second. Ooh, very scary situation. Oh, and in that tensity, uh, Prana Plant clutches it out with the up smash. Seven goes ahead and takes the set three to two. GG's. Good set. Good set indeed.